All right, this is the Soccer Sakura Tetris commentary. Um, I'm gonna start playing the video in three, two, one, go. Okay. So this is the Ura TGM game. Uh, it's a uh, Tetris with Card Captor Sakura released on the PS1 by Arika. Uh, supposedly the story behind this game is that they were going to port TGM to a home console, but for whatever reason it didn't end up happening. Uh, so they got the Card Captor Sakura license and basically made a TGM, uh, Card Captor Sakura themed TGM game. Um, so this mode is similar to, this game is similar to Sakura mode uh, from TGM3, which you might remember from last year and before, in that the goal is to clear all the jewels in a, or gems, in a uh, level. Uh, and to do that, you just clear a line that has a gem piece in it. So, unlike Sakura mode in TGM3, this game's piece sequence is completely random every time you play it, which makes it extremely intense. Um, the interesting thing about that, however, is that Whenever you play a level, you can either choose to restart the level with the same pieces or re-roll the pieces, uh, which you'll see me do a few times throughout the course of this run. So, here we just finish the first stage very quickly. There's a lot of uh, hardcore cutscene action in this game, so bear with me here. Uh, but it makes it very entertaining live race, because both players get completely different pieces, and there's definitely some strategy in, like, Oh god, are these pieces even possible to clear to level with? You know, and pulling the trigger on restarting when you need to. Uh, so the quality of play in this video is uh, a little dubious. Uh, I recorded it uh, at the very last minute in Japan uh, with my friends here, Corian and SQR, um, graciously uh, with the assistance of them. So I was playing on a D-pad, so you'll see some interesting misdrops, but it really shows the, uh, it really showcases the craziness of this game, I think. Alright, so let's, now that we've done an intro, let's, uh, get talking about the game. There are 18 stages? Yeah, 18 That's stages, 18. uh, in the game. They all have varying forms. Uh, some of them have gimmicks, some of them have rising garbage, uh, some of them are just completely impossible. Uh, so, unlike normal TGM, of course, you're not just stacking to, you know, clear Tetrises as much as possible. It's the amount of, kind of, abuse of the rotation system and other weird stuff, you know, that you need to do is much greater than it is. So there, you can see, I didn't like my piece sequence, so I selected, a uh, Chigao Tetromino, which is like, uh, you know, re-roll the pieces with different pieces. Um, this sequence, I think, was a lot better. I'm trying to remember. I literally just played this an hour ago, so you would hope I'd remember, but there's a couple levels where I restart many times to get the correct sequence, so. Okay, moving on. All right, this stage kind of requires an interesting twist here. Uh, the goal is basically to clear that top line and then twist the eyepiece into the bottom. Um, which you basically just... I had a little bit of a brain fart there and uh, forgot how to play Tetris momentarily. And a lot of Sakura comes down to that. It actually, in a way, is kind of reminiscent of playing Versus, where... Um, you know, versus Tetris, where there's a lot of down stacking through garbage and really trying to clear lines in a way that lets you lower your stack. Um, because it's all great clearing Tetrises, but if you have to raise the stack to do it, you know, that's totally useless in Sakura. So. Alright, now we're on mirror stage, which every few pieces mirrors your play field. Uh, it's really irritating. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, you might have the perfect twist set up, and then, boom, like that, your playfield gets mirrored. So, the goal here is to basically take care of the bottom, and then just kind of stack over it and clear the top. So, uh... 
this situation is like ah yes nice uh, nice mirror there and again you see me just completely ignoring those lines above the gem that I just cleared because they don't matter so this was a bit of a poor move though because now you can see I've got that eyepiece on the right or uh, left depending on when you look and that resulted in me having a really hard time clearing that gem row below it so I got a little bit lucky with the pieces here and uh, as a result managed to finish the level in a reasonable amount of time the mirror All right, this is a windy stage. The stage has a bit of an interesting, uh, there are definitely some piece combinations that you can get that really suck for clearing this stage. So luckily I got a pretty decent one from the start, so. I hear you just see me throwing down pieces to get something that can clear the gem as fast as possible. And there's quite a bit of that in this game. Um, you know, part of the skill is knowing, oh, like, I'm just about to clear the stage. I just need any piece that can clear the line, so... Alright, next is Flower Stage. They all have pretty funny names, actually. Uh, here you can tell that they meant for you to do a certain type of twist, but you never get the right piece. The ne you never get the right piece sequence to uh, do it, so... Again, here it's mostly just about uncapping that right side of the screen and then clearing the bottom lines, you know, as you normally would um, in TGM or something, so... That was maybe not the right way to approach that, but it still worked. Now you get a 20 minute timer for the entire game of 18 stages. Uh, the timer only counts when you were playing a stage, and also if you restart the stage, the in-game timer resets. Or rather, the timer resets to the level it was at the start of the stage. So um, the timer never really comes into play. Alright, this stage is a pretty simple... Uh, you know, uncap the uh, one wide well for uh, an eyepiece and then pound a couple eyepieces down and you're done. Well, not quite, but basically. Uh, and of course, I guess I want to stress again that, you know, just watching one player play this game um, might not look that impressive compared to TGM, but when you see two people trying to race to finish it uh, at the same time, you know, because they both have different pieces, it's really intense trying to see how different people clear the same stage, or how, you know, even one person clearing the stage two different ways uh, occurs. Alright, so this is one of the uh, first garbage stages, where I think you need to clear 30? 30, 30 lines of garbage? Uh, yeah, 30, 30, sorry, not 30 lines of garbage, 30, uh, well, there's some big amount of lines anyway, but you basically just keep clearing until the stage ends, so. This is really tricky because, because the garbage comes up so fast, if you make, oh yeah, and your next piece disappears, great, um, if you make a big mistake, on this stage like I just did there if in any way you have to stack up to uh, you know sometimes in TGM you gotta stack up before you can stack down uh, and if you end up needing to do that you're kinda just done uh, one of the later stages that actually occurs to me and you can see there was kinda only so much I could do because the garbage rises so fast uh, this stage it's not quite as bad but the earth. Uh, all 
All right. Moving right along here to Shadow Stage. So this stage you kind of get a little bit of a, well I guess no TGM game really does this. You get basically just the stack outline from TGM. Uh, there I messed up really badly. I think I messed this exact thing up like two or three times because, uh, again, playing on a D-pad is fine because this game is mostly a puzzle game unlike TGM. But uh, in those rare instances where you really have to do some kind of difficult action, uh, it can be a bit of a challenge. So you'll see there I restart with uh, Onaji Tetramino, uh, which is, you know, the same same pieces, basically. Um. And it's actually interesting. There are a few situations where, even if you don't make a misdrop, uh, if you see you know, that you got a certain set of pieces that would have helped you earlier in the stage, you know, restarting can actually be faster than playing it out, even if you don't make a mistake. So, uh... I don't think I do that any times in this run, but fairly frequently it does show up in this game. And of course, most of the game mechanics are the same from TGM2 here, so you've got, you know, your sonic drop when you push up, which, uh, drops the piece, but... Uh, doesn't lock it, etc. So the game's controls are really nice, just like TGM. Now this just sucks. Like, um, unless you get basically what just happened to me there, you're gonna be in for a bad time. So there's definitely some restarting to be had. But I got a little bit lucky, and then. You know, part of the skill is, of course, recognizing, oh, I got that piece, so I can do this little advanced trick. Um, which is interesting, because, you know, Sakura mode in TGM3 is basically solved. Like, because you get the same pieces every time, uh, unless you enter a special code, you know, there is a best path through the game. Whereas with this, when you're playing um, the first time through the story mode, you get random pieces, so... It is... A little more challenging and really fun to race, actually. <laughs> okay, this level, um, I don't want to say it's super hard, but it is a little awkward. Right there. I think I just powered through this level. Just, like, I messed something up and just brute forced my way through the level anyway. Um, maybe? And, of course, we see the return of Color Block from TGM. In this game, for some reason, it's a little more aggravating than it is in TGM. Uh, yeah, I messed up pretty badly, so I just restart with different pieces. Because, you know, I didn't see a good way to solve it with the pieces that I had, so... Alright, here we have a much better situation. A much better situation that I still somehow managed to mess up. Now, the average level of difficulty of the levels in this game versus Sakura mode in TGM3 is, in my opinion, much higher. Um, it is a little bit of a miracle, actually, that they made this, like, you know, cutesy card capture Sakura Tetris game, and then they made it so ridiculously hardcore. Um, you kind of wonder what their target audience was. Maybe they didn't have one. I don't know. But... Ah, uh, yes, the illusion. Okay, woods stage. This is, uh... This is the really, really tough stage. Uh, probably, I would say, the hardest. <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, nah, these pieces... Oh, yes, and I restarted multiple times and kept getting the, uh... T piece, which is totally useless at the start of this stage. So, in this stage, the uh, garbage rises very quickly. So, I believe I die here. Actually, um, like I said, it's really tough because the difference between clearing it quickly and just being totally unable to clear it. Yeah, that one misdrop I think cost me the entire stage. Yep. So. 
luckily uh, you can restart. And then again, you can pick Onaji Tetramino or Chigao Tetramino. So I picked different pieces, and uh, that may have been a mistake. <laughs> but nonetheless, I cleared it this time. It was uh, not too bad. And that's the thing. It's a really short stage. So it basically comes down to that decision that you make at, right at the start of the stage of how you're going to attack it. Okay. Get some more uh, anime cutscenes. Not really cutscenes, but uh, dialogue. Alright, Thunder Stage. This stage is tough, and I think in this video I mess it up at least once at the start. Um, if you do what I did and you kind of end up like creating a wall like to uh, you basically need to have some column at least that is clear all the way down to the bottom of the screen uh, which is sort of tricky to set up but I'll put it this way it shouldn't be tricky to set up but in practice it like that see now you know it's basically impossible to clear that bottom line I think what I do here is I just brute force my way to the end of it um, And that was because at this point, I think I was on pace to beat Enchantress's record. And I was just like, nah, screw it. We're, uh, we're clearing the stage no matter what. So, And I think I thought it would be easier to do than it actually was. So, Okay. Another nice thing about this game compared to TGM is the setup time is like maybe five minutes versus maybe close to an hour for the entire TGM series, uh, setting up multiple uh, boards worth of setups. So, nice little small package compared to uh, Arcade Tetris. Ah, yes, the, the Clo. <laughs> I don't know what the clue is, but, uh, apparently, uh, clue stage is a thing, so. This stage, I believe, is this the same as one of the EX stages in TGM3? Mm, a bit different of design. Ah, yeah, it's similar to one of the EX stages in TGM3, uh, but not quite the same. Alright. Uh. Got a little bit lucky with that clear there, but... Again, this game really compared to TGM. You know, TGM 1, I think a lot of people say, is a real puzzle game because it's so slow. TGM 2 is a little bit of like a puzzle action game, and then TGM 3 is just an action game. But um, this game, you know, because it's got the TGM 1 and 2 rotation system, uh... It's a little more on the puzzle game end of the spectrum. So it's actually, I would say, at least as a player and maybe as a viewer, it's a little more interesting to see people try and solve, you know, kind of really hard stacking puzzles. So again, this is that same mechanic of, you know, trying to keep a, at least a two-wide column open all the way down the play field, you know, to attack the lower row, rows. Uh, that worked out pretty well there. I think we're coming into the home stretch here. Uh, yeah, there are two stages left. There's this one and then the final boss stage. So. Again, this stage is... If you don't approach the start right, you're just basically done. Uh, there, that worked out quite well. So. Here, I have a feeling I mess it up the first time. Yeah, I did. I wasn't patient enough to wait for the T-piece. And I thought I could make it work, but... Um, Apparently, it's a bit of a struggle. So, again, 
Starting with the T piece that sucks is completely useless. Um, here, let's see if we can get the setup going. Yeah, throw that over to the left. That was a good move because putting it on the right could have put me in trouble. And then again, here we have the uh, you know three wide to kind of transport pieces to the bottom of the screen. Um, this was maybe not the most efficient way to clear the bottom, but. All oh, right, yeah. Uh, I messed it up, so I restart again. Um, it's sort of tough because you don't really ever know if what you did is, you know, completely safe. You just have to do, uh, actually, what SQ SQR and I were talking about a while back, which is that you know TGM is a game of avoiding the worst possible outcome, uh, and that's a lot of what you do in this game is just trying to set something up that will hopefully uh hopefully not ruin you so much like pinball actually interestingly enough okay now we're coming into the final stage which is sort of a boss battle um the screen is two fields wide and every few pieces um one of the sides gets uh invisible, becomes invisible, much like, you know, the emerald, the credits roll in uh, TGM2 and TGM3. Uh, this is fine, because you can just look over at the other side, but it's sort of annoying, and if you're playing really fast, it can cause a little, like, visual confusion, and you can miss drop because of it, so. Okay. So again, this is one of those stages where you just need to try and keep the stack clean. Um, <laughs> I say this and then immediately misdrop afterwards, but uh, as long as you don't take too long to recover from a misdrop, uh, you're usually fine. The garbage in this mode seems to generally be pretty friendly, so, you know, it's not like total Swiss cheese garbage like, um, some games, but, uh, it can still be a little intimidating. We're at the end of the stage, so I just need to clear that bottom line, uh, which worked out really well. Just need that eyepiece, and we got it. And that is the end of the game in what I believe is 22 minutes and 34 seconds, uh, according to this timer that we have here. So, hope you enjoyed watching it, and uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope we. Uh, get to show this game off to you.